Hello and welcome to another episode of the iPad Lettering Show. My name is Karen, I am from iPad Lettering and in today's episode I am so excited to show you all the new Procreate 4.2 features. This release is extremely exciting to me. This is actually almost as cool as the release when we had the mixed media brushes and I'll show you why in a second. So there's a number of new features that I want to show you. To start with, let's look at my favorite new feature, which are the liquify options that have been added to the liquify tool. It's super cool. And I want to show you a little example. So to start with, I'm just going to draw some random splatters on my page. You can choose any color for this. It doesn't really matter. I'm just showing you how I'm doing this and what I think looks very cool. So we'll add some different colors. Let's add a bit of yellow as well. And a bit more pink. All right, and then let's select liquify from the adjustments menu. So we've got liquify. And you'll see here that we've got some additional options here. We've got some additional liquify modifications, but we've also got options here to amend the distortion and the momentum. So to start with, I just wanna show you what the liquify tool looked like before these additions. So we have, um, if you select push, we were able to push the pixels around the screens like this, which was very cool already. But now let's see what happens when we turn on distortion and momentum. And now watch this. So now we can create little ripples and this is almost like water. And it's just so cool to play with this. Now, one of my favorite ways to use this is actually with the expand tool. So let's select the expand tool and then the size to 100%. And let's see what happens when we do that. So now you can create this beautiful, beautiful effect. And depending where you hold your brush, you can see you can sort of make these colors expand this way. And just create these beautiful effects. So now what I like to do as well is actually mix these different techniques up. So um, using the expand tool and then I, I find that this part here looks very nice. So let's select push now and then just push this out this way. So now this looks very nice. And then now let's see. Let's push this down a bit. So this looks very nice. So we also have the crystals and this is quite fun. You'll see how you can add these little zigzags motion, motions here. Let's undo. And then each as well, which sort of creates an each. So you can kind of pull back the colors that you've um, pushed out before, but I don't like this one so much, so I can undo. And you'll see that the redo and undo gestures work as part of this tool as well. And another one that you might like to try out is pinch, which is kind of similar to the edge, but it sort of pinches in from different sides. So there's a lot of options here for you to try out. And as always, I recommend that you just go wild and just try it all because it's a lot of fun. And I've spent hours and hours trying this and it's, it's I, I really, really have a lot of fun with this. All right, so then the next new feature that has been introduced with Procreate 4.2 is the clipping masks. And I feel the best way to show you how these works is just give you a little example. So let's create a new layer and let's select white and then I'm just gonna write a word here. So I'll use that Quicksilver brush for this and then I'm just gonna write the word clipping. Just quickly. So now 
In a previous version of Procreate, if you wanted to fill this word, which is now white, with the background color, you had to do selecting it and then filling it with the other color, which was a destructive modification. But now, with the addition of clipping masks, we don't have to do that anymore. So all we have to do is move the layer that you want to clip onto your lettering layer and then select clipping mask, which is here. And now you have filled the layer with the contents of the layers above. And the nice thing about doing that is, is that it's not destructive. So that means both of these layers still have all their pixels intact. You can make changes. And so this is a really nice way of working. This is a feature that has been around in Photoshop forever. And so it's very nice to see that this is available in Procreate 2 now. All right. So then the next feature that I would like to show you is the quick shape tool. I'm just going to turn these layers off. The quick shape tool is not something that I'm using that much, but I just want to show you how this works. So pretty much what that does, you can draw a shape and then hold down your pencil and then it sort of snaps into place and then you'll see that there's an edit shape button available here. So you tap on that and then you can choose whether you want an ellipse or a circle. So let's make a circle which tries to calculate the perfect circular shape of this and this is how you can make a circle now let's see what else we can do a rectangle as well so let's just draw a very rough rectangle hold down the pencil until it snaps into place and then tap edit shape and you see that there is a number of options available here and let's choose rectangle like that and then you can carry on changing the shape and the size of your rectangle. So this is not as precise as if you were using a vector-based app such as Affinity Designer or Vectornator of any of those types of apps. But, you know, just to create a quick shape, this is perfect. All right, and then we have obviously the line as well. That was there before and that hasn't changed too much, but you can also edit shape and you can create a line or you can create a polyline and so this this still works pretty much the same as it did before and then the next feature which is a very much requested feature as well is the ability to resize your canvas this really really makes a huge difference and in my mind is a massive game changer to do that, you select your actions and then the canvas selection here. And you see there's a new menu entry here that says crop and resize. So you tap on that and then you get into the crop and resize mode. And now there's two things you can do here. You can either drag your the shape of your canvas with your pencil like this and you can create any, any um, size that you'd like. And the, or you can change the pixels here. So let's say I want to make this 6,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels. I could do that, maybe not 60,000, 6,000. And it'll also tell me how many layers that I'll have if I change my canvas to the size. So what you'll notice is if you make this too big, you won't have any layers left. So the app actually restricts you based on the device that you're running this on, on how many layers you'll have available. Now let's just resize this bit and then you can also position the canvas so that your existing artwork goes exactly into the place that you want it to go. And then all you have to do is hit done and then it'll, it says cropping canvas. In our case, it has increased it in size so that you have your new canvas size like that. Now, one of the things I want to show you as well with this, you would have noticed that there is a resample button here. And I strongly recommend that you don't use this because if you do, it means you could create larger canvases, but it also means you will lose the resolution of your document. And in most cases, this is not what you want. So unless you really know and you're really, really sure that that's what you want to do, I would strongly recommend that you keep this off. All right, and then, Another really cool feature that has been added to Procreate 4.2 is some really nice additions to the brushes. And obviously I like making brushes, so this is very, very useful for um, what 
I'm doing. So I want to show you. Let's just go back to the gallery and I want to use one of my watercolor canvases to show you. So I've made a selection of new brushes and I call them real brushes and I will do another video explaining what all these brushes do in more detail but just for the purpose of this video I want to show you some really cool um, features of the new brushes so one of the things is the stroke taper so in the previous version of Procreate sometimes when you draw a stroke the ending of your brush stroke here was a little bit harsh or maybe not quite the way you intended it but now there is an option to taper the brushes so that these ugly endings don't happen so much anymore and it's actually made a huge difference um, let's just have a look so if we have a look at this brush mark you'll see here that there's now a lot of different options of how we can change the tapering of of your brushes and so this is this is really nice now a nice side effect of this tapering brush strokes I find is that you don't have to have your streamline setting set up to 100% anymore. I find now that with this additional setting my brushes work better if I don't max out the streamline feature. So this is a um, brush that I made which creates really nice thick and thin strokes. I'm just going to change the color to make it a bit more obvious what this looks like. So it's just like that and that's that's very nice and you see that it's got nice even edges and then another new feature that comes with the new brush settings is the ability to individually set the pressure for the brush size the opacity and the bleed per brush so it's not a global setting anymore but it's actually a setting that's individual per brush and to illustrate this I want to show you um, the fountain pen brush that I made so this brush now instead of just being quite kind of even with the um, thickness when you create your stroke this creates now a sort of an uneven stroke and this is how it's possible to emulate real brushes a lot easier so this one here I quite like a lot this one now creates quite uneven brush strokes and you can see it creates these little these little edges here and it's not something that I've written it's just because I've set up the brush this way that it creates this and so you can really get some really nice effects with um, these new brush settings and they look they look really really nice and these new settings also allowed me to massively improve my watercolor brushes as well so I've created this juicy pen here and this is now really really nicely realistic and you can see how that the color changes even nicer than before and it's just super super nice to use this And then there is quite a few nice little other changes as well that I would like to show you. So let's open this canvas. And one of the nice things here is that um, you're now given the ability to create feathered selections. So you'll see here if you select the selection menu, there is additional options here. And let's choose the ellipse and then draw an ellipse. So this creates now a selection here. And I now have the ability to feather the selection and I'll show you what this looks like. So select feather, which brings up an additional menu here. And then I select the amount of feathering that I would like to do. And feather just means that it sort of fades out your selection and creates a nice um, subtle transition. All right, so let's do that and then hit duplicate. And now you don't really see anything because all it's done is it's created a new selection and it's copied whatever pixels were based in the selection onto a new layer. And to re reveal that, let's turn the existing layer off. And now you can see how it's created the selection and it's a very, very nice soft transition around the edges. And then another really nice new addition to the selection tool is the ability to warp shapes. So you'll see that there is some new menu options here. There is now freeform, which is the same as the existing selection tool with the magnetics. Or if you wanted to change your shape uniformly, you can select this. And from experience, I feel this is the same setting as if you were choosing freeform and then magnetic. So that means it just resizes your shape um, uniformly. 
or we can do it this way so it kind of does the same thing and you'll also notice there is now the addition of this little green handle here and this is actually really handy because this allows you to rotate your shape like this it's just an, a, a sort of a little thing, but it actually makes quite a big difference in practice. So this is really, really well thought out. And then additionally to the distort transformation tool here, we also got a warp tool. And this is very cool as well, because this allows you to change the shape sort of in the middle of the shape as well, rather than just around the edges. So you can create some really nice effects with this as well. So let's see what this looks like. Maybe we could leave it like this. And so this was a nice, easy transformation of the existing shape. And it, it looks a lot more beautiful now. Now, what, what you would have noticed, there is a little interpolation setting here. So if you tap on that, you get to choose how you want the calculation of the additional pixels that need to be created to be calculated. And I recommend that you select by cubic because that, crea that creates the smoothest transitions between the pixels. So the default setting is by linear. So when you start using the selection tools here, make sure that you just turn up the interpolation menu and then select by cubic. And then you don't have to remember it anymore. Procreate will remember the setting for you. And then you uh, ensure that you always have the smoothest transitions for your warping and distorting and any of the transformations that you're making to your artwork. All right, so now let's turn this back on and see what it looks like. So this creates a nice little transition here. And there you have it. These are all the new features of Procreate 4.2. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think this is a fantastic update and I can't wait to see what you are going to create with it. Till next time.